Hi YouTube. Hope you're doing good. I'm doing okay. It's been kind of a weird day. Um, I just don't have a lot of energy today. I don't know if it's because of the weather. It's kind of cloudy out. I think that has a lot to do with it. I did exercise and <laughs> I'm listening to a uh, uh, Awaken with JP. He's got a comedian on there. I think his name. Oh, gee, I don't know. I don't remember now. Um, but the guy is pretty funny. He does a really good impersonation of Donald Trump um, talking about warp speed, and which I refer to as warped speed because a lot of people that believe that Trump was some sort of savior didn't know that he was a, a Kabbalian priest, a, a Baal worshiper, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, like it says in the scriptures, they sacrificed their children to Moloch or Molech. And um, that's the Canaanites. And that's who they are. So anyway. Um, ran across a woman yesterday talking about um, the pitfalls of Jehovah Witnesses and... Um, what it says in their elder handbook and that type of thing. And boy, I, I can relate. I wrote, yeah, I had to kick those bitches out of my house. I did too, because um, it was either I went along with their religious teachings. How does this sound like? I'm pretty familiar with a lot of cult type activities, but. Either I went to their church and did the things they said within that church, or I would lose my job. I picked a job. The um, If you know anything about their teachings, or what you know on the surface level, if you don't know about the Elder Handbook, um, it's actually like a money-making scheme. They get people in there. You don't. It's a destruction of the family, and that's my topic today. Anyway, with something else that's going on, but um, they initiate the man not even having relations with his own wife within the church and it goes a lot deeper than that that's it in brief but the same people the elders of the church that i had worked for also believed in like uh going to strip clubs and taking their employees which i didn't go but my ex did you know that type of thing so they were not righteous people you know they just wanted to make money off of people that they could get into their congregation and then um, get like so much of your income going towards the elders in that church, you know. So, yeah. And then you're expected to go out and evangelize and... I'm like, I am not knocking door to door when I've taught people of God and my faith in God all my life. I'm not going to go knock. I've, not, I've knocked on thousands of doors just with my personality through the different states that I've been through in my whole life anyway. And to me, that's, that's, uh, testimony on a personal basis, you know, not invading somebody's personal space. And I've chased them off my land, too. It's like, don't come back here and don't send your children to the door. That's, that's very foolish as far as I'm concerned. 
more people that I would uh, categorize as sacrificing their children, you know. And they do. So, anyway. But what brought, brought on the my thinking today as far as the breakdown of a family, I was watching Eye for an Eye channel, and he had on there, there's a whole website and groups of people now that are putting down chastising other people for having children or, or wanting to have children. But especially the ones of us that already have children, you know, like you, you're, uh, there's a mom, a dad, and children, and that's sort of like a natural thing on this planet to want to make a family with the person you love. It's, uh, used to be natural instincts, but, you know, now, on the other hand, if I had known that I was the only family-minded person in the whole situation, I would not have had children. And I'm sure there's probably plenty of, maybe not, maybe not just because they're single parents, but there's probably a lot of people that have gone through breakups and have seen their children suffer that would probably feel the same way. But um, I, I feel it's really agenda driven, you know, by the people that, um, sleep with their own bloodline to keep that going are the ones that don't want you to have children. You don't have that right, but they do. That type of feeling is what I get off the whole thing, you know. Then there's some people that are calling for not to have children, and I think that's a really wise idea for them, you know. And then there's ones that think that the world needs more of them, and they could be sadly mistaken. So, I don't know, just thinking about it. <laughs> People certainly have their own ideas. And you know what you might think when you're in your teens and your 20s or even 30s might even change when you get older, you know. There's older people that thought about having children. And I don't know, to me, like when I see like a 70-year-old man with a younger woman and they have a child, um, like an ex-president that just got done before here, um, he'll probably never see his grandchildren, you know. To me, that's selfish. That's like if I were to get a pet now intentionally. I have a pregnant cat I'm taking care of, the one who got out with the broken leg, um, but I wouldn't intentionally go purchase an animal knowing that it's probably going to outlive me. And the same with children. If you're not um, going to be there for them, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I believe, although although some of us weren't so lucky, but I believe that it's ideally nice to have your parents to talk to when you're a young parent, you know, and then they're the grandparent, and you have um, their wisdom that you can see. Uh, doesn't always work like that, but... <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, I thought about following this gal that was talking about the Jehovah Witness, and I thought, no, nah, there was something there. 
that that it seemed a little little off to me. I, that's why I'm not going to mention her name. It was a, just a something like self-serving or she was out to totally like insult somebody in particular. And it really didn't have anything to do with educating the people about the actions of that church and what people go through when you become a Jehovah Witness, which I never actually became a member of the church, but go down there, scram. Yeah, I was not a, a good Jehovah for them, huh. witness. I I don't say I don't know what they're witnessing, but um, to me it wasn't the word of God. So. No, don't get me wrong. Any time that we can deny the flesh and say "f you, Satan," you know, um, but that's not what it was, and it wasn't. Uh, bringing families closer, not the way it was taught that I heard it. Um, and then the men that were teaching that were loose-minded, you know. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to learn anything from you people. Not the stupid women that allowed their men to act like that and to recruit other people into that church. Uh, all of it, it was so messed up. It was um, pretty nuts. <laughs> oh. And then I start to thinking about again. All day, it still befuddles me how people can call themselves people of God. And still believe in wars. It just, the two things don't go together. Not the almighty creator versus the satanic system on this planet that most people pay reverence to. Most, not all, but most. And that brings to mind a friend that needed some help. If they knew the many times I actually helped them and they didn't know. Um, and then when my help is vacant, I might have help, need help, and I won't say anything. I won't say a word. A friend would notice, but um, a self-serving person wouldn't. So that's where I stand on that. No, I am. Um, I pray for people to get the help that they deserve. I really do. And probably people pray the same for me. If you do, I'm forever grateful. <laughs> that should mean that I'm going to be getting a lot of things. Maybe not on this planet, but, you know, yeah, we do make our pick. Um, it's a decision because if you uh, honor the God of this world, he calls himself, they call themselves gods, um, you'll be rewarded. And if you deny that, it's a battle every day for your existence. And that's the way it goes. So you do make a decision. <coughs> we really do. I mean, by the grace of God, we might meet somebody, like if you get a wonderful job or something. Um... But I don't always trust that, too, because there's times I thought, man, this is such a great job. And then the other shoe would drop. It's like, oh, 
that's why I got the job. Now I understand, you know. Yeah, had that happen quite a few times. I had this most excellent job. Oh, I loved it. Place with a swimming pool and everything. Everything I could even want right within walking distance. There was a nightclub lounge, a cafe, a resort. Hot Springs, I mean, just, and I was the secretary there, but the boss was a dog that would not leave me alone, but my ex didn't care, so I was supposed to keep that job and that position and let this whoremonger treat me any way he wanted to treat me, you know, it's like, uh yeah, but it was, ideally, it would have been a wonderful job, but it didn't turn out to be like that, you know. I've had a few of them, it's like, oh, this is just a dream job on a mountain, you know, everything I could possibly want. Friends, I loved it. I loved the area, I loved my friends. It was wonderful, <laughs> you know. But my ex did end up getting, uh, like, kicked out of the bar. They 69'd him out of the bar. So that's not really good for me, you know. That was terrible. He pushed a bunch of guys out of jealousy. They all just fell like dominoes down the bar. It was really grotesque. You know, and the only reason people like that get jealous is because they're dogs themselves, you know. Otherwise, normal people don't act like that because I never did anything ever in relationships to bring out any kind of jealousy out of any man or any woman. I would treat people with respect and love no matter where I went. Even if they didn't deserve it, you know. So, yeah, that was pretty hideous. So they let him go. So what am I supposed to do? Like, stay there with one income with this um, um, emotional invalid, you know. Because that's what they are. When people can't control themselves, they're not only mentally unstable, but they are um, emotionally handicapped, you know. And it's a lot of the time, these people bring it upon themselves. They, um, it, it's a part of their personal makeup, and like narcissism, but I, I am a, big proponent. I can't prove this because I can see through traumas that if narcissism is caused by trauma in childhood and one person has had more trauma than another person, what makes that one person be able to work through that and another person isn't able to? The same type of scenarios, and maybe even the one that isn't a narcissist has it way, or had it way worse, but they don't have those emotional disabilities. I think it has to do with how close of a walk we have with God and how we react in life to other human beings, you know, I think that is a really key factor on whether a person is a narcissist or not. And they can say they're really religious and upstanding people, 
and and there's some people that don't believe that empathy is a real thing. I think a person can over empathize with people and that would be a big mistake because empathy is a real thing. It's something you almost in this world have to unlearn to survive. You know, if you know what I mean, have you ever found yourself in a, in a situation or a group of people where they're all cold hearted and you can feel it all? You might even understand why they're feeling that way, but that is not going to help you in that certain situation. So you end up picking up the traits of these cold hearts like a survival mechanism. But the only thing is, and I've seen this out of people too, is then it becomes habitual and they don't drop it. Once they survive that situation, it now just became a part of who they are and they, it's like they just can't come out of it, you know? I'm not talking about a full-blown narcissist. This I do believe and I can't prove has to do with ungodliness, you know? And I won't just speak about any certain religion, but there are religions that are more prone to narcissism than just somebody that maybe has God in their heart and doesn't have an actual set um, church that they go in or anything, you know. Because the churches, the people um, are described as the churches and your personality of that church is where you fall in in either cat any category out of the seven church churches, you know. Yeah, people believe in him more. Still, forever, it's never ending. And then they give their stamp of approval for the next generation. And it just goes on and on. Like, uh, Supposedly, we have some, the United States has some kind of a submarine now over by Israel that they they say they're there out of protection. Why? It's not our job. I I don't condone any of this. That's what sickens me is the American people. The United States is being represented by buffoons and heathens. For the buffoons and heathens that are fighting these wars. And it's got our name written all over it. And we don't want our name on it. And they keep pretending that most normal people do. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe most people aren't normal. And maybe they actually do believe in the military. a big possibility, you know. Not sure. Oh, geez, Douglas, I'll paint in that Jeep of ours um, black. And he had one part of one side done, and it started raining. I think it's going to be okay. And it's just kind of like a, it's just a plow truck, you know, but, and I'm sure it'll be okay, but it was just a little weird, <laughs> you know. I don't 
año. It's not that I don't have a lot to talk about. It's that I really am, I mean, how many times can people ask people to reconsider their beliefs, you know? I can't remember who it was I was watching and they were talking about, um, well, it was the origination of um, the black Africans coming out of the um, bloodline of Ham and how all of us are stem from the bloodline of Noah after the flood and uh, that type of thing, which was really interesting, but that got me to thinking that I don't know if any of you are aware, but I had just learned this maybe a few months ago, that the name Noah is also in reference to a fe female name. It's like also like a, um, Tony or Robin or different different names that can be male or female. That's the same with the name Noah. You know, in case anybody didn't know because I didn't know that up until a few months ago. I do believe it's uh, Hebrew. But uh, I don't know if the etymology of the word, and in in uh, gematria, I'm not sure if it would be considered feminine or not. That's a. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna look it up. I was gonna look it up the other day. I am gonna look it up now. Um, and see what we get out of that. <laughs> If it pulls up, we do have sort of like cloudy weather, and sometimes my internet is non existent when it's stormy or it's pulling up. Let's see what this says. Uh, let's see how I'm going to type it in there. What, what, do I, what do I say? Or maybe I'm mistaken. I just heard it out of somebody, actually, that had said that his ex-wife's name was Noah. Now, I don't know if it's like a friend of mine. Her last name is Noah. It's N-O-A. And she's Muslim. Or she was Muslim. Or pretended to be a Christian. Or pretends to be a Muslim. One of, the, one of, the, one of them. Or isn't any anything, and that's probably closer to the truth. Now they want to update me to a new version of my browser. Okay, if this is going to mess me over, I'm going, and you'll get no more of my time. I don't want to do this right now. Well, get real co-pilot in this app. I don't need to co-pilot nothing. I just want to use my flipping browser, you jerks. No, that's enough. Forget it. I'm going to close that out, one of these. There's two tabs open and see. No. What? I don't want this. Let's see. 
see what this comes up with if I can get it. Just do it. Noah is a girl's name of Hebrew origin, meaning motion. It's derived from the Hebrew Noah, which is also the name of a female figure in the Old Testament. Noah is traditionally used as a boy's name in the U.S., but there is a feminine version of the name Noah, N-O-A, which also is a biblical name and a popular name in Israel, Spain, Portugal, and the Netherlands. That's what I thought. Because some of these um, writings in the scriptures that I sense is a female figure, like when they say so many uh, bloodlines came out of Noah, um, he, that's more indicative of a female having multiple births than it is of a man having perhaps several wives or the different types of misogynistic, like woman-hating type of language that they often use. So, and my suspicions were right there. You can look it up. I just did for you. But there it is. There's all kinds of things in the scriptures like that, too, where um, it doesn't make sense that that it were a man in the situation when uh, it's more logical that a woman's position in the world applied better in the story, you know? So, I don't know. I'm sure some guys are like, no, that's not right. And, well, maybe that's why people in Judaism look at uh, other Zionist religions, the Abrahamic religions like Lutheran or whatever, like you're stupid because you don't know the language and they treat you like you're lesser because they can trick you and you don't know any better. So, and that's something, now this is not, well, yeah, it's satanic, but that part where if they tell you an untruth and you believe it, that's on you. Yeah. They Now that part, they do do. <laughs> you know, any, any liar, any good liar is going to feel like that anyway. If I were to tell you an untruth, well, that's your problem because you believed me. It's not because I were, if I were a liar, it's because you're stupid to believe the lies, you know. And I think the arc is like an electricity, like the arc between uh, the Spirit of God and humanity, like if it were an archangel, this is indicating um, energy, that arc of energy. So when Noah got into the ark, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. Anyway. And they say all these people lived for so many hundreds of years. And like with Jason from Archaics has proved that these people did not count the calendar days. They counted like a birthday would be like 
um, if Abraham were 375, 375 days, that'd be like a little over a year old or something like that. Or, you know, if somebody lived to be 920, well, maybe, you know, what would that be? Um, like four, a little over four, you know, that type of thing. I don't know. Or, or maybe with a zero on it, but they, they calculated things through days and the lunar cycle and this lunar cycle is 30 days and a day was considered from morning to evening so from the sunrise to sunset I don't know but it, it's it's been proven with a lot of lot of older writings and teachings that even the year was 360 days. They added five more days on it to work out their satanic math to correlate with um, deceiving everybody. So you would not know when the clock, the celestial clock was in alignment with your energy to talk to God, that type of thing, or how people used to plant by um, using the moon as a indicator, like, like on a full moon, this is a good day to plant or whatever, you know, their, their calendar system was entirely different. And so were their years and their days. You know, it's like in the scriptures where it says the day is as a year and a year is as a day. And don't be ignorant of this one thing. I'm not ignorant of it. I'm trying to explain it as good as I can here. Um, that God's time isn't the same as ours. We realize that. But I think it goes a lot deeper and also, when they're adding days to a calendar, um, oh, I don't, they're trying, it's like they're trying to buy more time, like, um, push the timeline ahead for their benefit or whatever they think they're getting out of it. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just the deception of it all is what I'm trying to say. When you're reading the scriptures, you have to read it with your heart and you have to be logical, unless it's specifically like a parable or they're talking, um, um, you know, metaphorically, spiritually, there's some things like when you slay somebody, when you slay them with the word, um, or if God instructs you to, to, um, like war with the people, does that necessarily mean murder? There is a spiritual war going on right now, but Christians don't believe in putting their hands on anybody in a derogatory way. But there's um, religious leaders out here that say they are of God that will approve of that. And that's a real evil leadership right there. It is. There's some other names in the scriptures, you know, that have been uh, twisted, like, uh, um, what's the son of Sham, I think, Methuselah, or no, wait, maybe that was one of Noah's sons. I can't remember, but there's also a mythological Methuselah 
that was a female, that serpent woman. She has serpent for hair, you know. She sounds pretty poisonous, <laughs> venomous. <laughs> but yeah, just the names and even the word king can be referred to as a female. It's a title, like Lord. Um, you know, these types of things that have feminine connotations connected to it before the male. You know, the etymology of the words. You know. I personally believe in the Almighty being a male figure for myself. But I believe that he's got a wife. <laughs> and that's how we all started from her body with his thoughts. Um, but if I found out that the Almighty was a woman, that wouldn't make my love for, for making me and loving other people any less than, you know. So whoever believes what, if it's in goodness, I'm not going to um, chastise them in that respect, you know, so. I just brought some wood in. Might be a little interrupting. It's not a big deal. We'll work through it. But if you see what I mean, a lot of the names have been changed and not to protect the innocent, but to protect the guilty. And these are the types of things that we really got to work through. I really don't believe that a big wooden ship was built and all kinds of animals were crammed on there. I, I don't believe that. Maybe some people do. I believe that people were directed by God, like in that arc, to protect themselves, like going to highest mountains or different lands, or they traveled, that type of thing, maybe on ship. But I don't believe that the word arc actually meant a ship. At least not in that that way. Huh. And I'm sure some people will disagree. And there's other people that believe that there were many arcs built that people knew, like uh, what they call the Phoenix or Wormwood or Nibiru with that cycle was coming around. That's the cycle that the, the so-called people in charge know more about than most people. And let, like the time clock of resets that they're fully aware of that they're trying to keep the general public from understanding, you know, like just what time it is. So. Just a second here. Hello. Hi. Forget it. <laughs> He'll probably be in here in a little while. He's got to, he's going to go in and do a little bit of shopping after a little bit. And I made a tiny list. <laughs> so He'll probably be coming in to get that in a bit here. Huh. Yeah. What do you think about that arc? Thing. Do you really think that 
two of each of everything was on there. And the reason I don't, and this is the reason, because on a voyage like that, not only for the um, feeding and the care and the waste of all of it, which I could, I guess, could be doable, but just the urine of a, a horse or an elephant would, like, flood everybody else out. I don't know. I don't see how all that would have been possible. They could have had, like, dung beetles, I guess, eating up a bunch of the waste, or maybe they had a way to turn it into, like, methane, or God knows, because I believe we had far advanced civilizations than what we have now, so I don't know, but I think that if you had, like, two lambs, what if one died? You know, and you wouldn't want to bring a bunch of pregnant animals up in the ark because uh, being on a ship for that long, I don't know. It all just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, logically. I think there's parts of the world that were spared, you know. That's what I think. And then that's where people or animals or whatever would have survived. Because there's stories like when, when they let, first they let like a raven go. And the raven didn't come back. Then they let a dove go. And the dove came back with the knowledge olive branch. Um, I don't know. To me, it's more likely with the Judaism that's behind all that. They probably took the pregnant Noah and threw her off the side of the ship because they wanted to fornicate with their daughters. That's probably more closer to the truth than she was pregnant and she washed up on an island you know, who knows? All I know is there's a bunch of lies in there because of the language. If it's fake, it's fake. It doesn't matter if it's one word that's changed. If you change one word like that name, what does that make the rest of that text, you know? And I just read it to you, the origins, origin of Noah, Hebrew, feminine, and the male version was is used in the United States. So these rabbis know. They know the deception within uh, um the scriptures that have been changed and then they write their own books so they can take advantage of the ones that are unsuspecting. Now once again this doesn't take the Christ spirit or God out of anybody's heart but knowing the truth of everything is better for everybody. You know. That's how I feel about it. That's why I said I don't care what I find out as long as we find out the truth. You know. Some people may not feel like that. I don't feel offended that somebody believes in something else that I don't believe in. I, I'm more offended of the ones that have I have a God persona and think of themselves as the creator or even co-creators. I um, I'm not really a big proponent of 
believing we can just manifest our thoughts. Yes, in a sense, in a sense, but not without um, God's energy. And that does not make us the creator or even co-creator. That just makes us a child of God with the abilities and gifts that he gave us. You know, that's my belief. Well, I'm going to get this uploaded. I love you all. I appreciate you joining me. Um, have a really good night or day wherever you're at. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA.